in the name of Allah, our Creator, the Creator of the universe and of everything that's in it. I greet you all, dear viewers, in our Islamic way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace, blessings, and mercy be with you all. And we continue with our discussion on Islam and science. And this episode is uh, concerned with the preservation of the environment in Islam. And uh, in a previous episode, we mentioned how man has polluted his environment to a very dangerous level that is threatening life on the surface of our own planet. We have seen how burning immense quantities of fossil fuel has polluted the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, and the lithosphere. And many uh, scholars on the environment are warning today that man is facing a real disaster in a very short span of time unless man stands to revise all his procedures on the surface of Earth wisely, rationally, and logically. Strangely enough, we find in the Quran a book revealed more than 14 centuries ago to an unlettered prophet, peace be upon him, in an unlettered society, we find a warning from this bleak situation man is passing through today. In surah number 30, surah ar rum we find this warning from Allah, all glory be to him. The verse reads, ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس ليذيقهم بعض الذي عملوا لعلهم يرجعون. Corruption has appeared on land and in the sea. ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس by what the hands of people have earned ليذيقهم بعض الذي عملوا so that Allah will let them taste part of what they have done لعلهم يرجعون lest they could come back to their logic, to their minds, to their intelligence, and reconsider their actions on the surface of that planet. When the Quran says corruption has appeared on land and in the sea, when we talk about land, we include the atmosphere above it. When we talk about the sea, we include the atmosphere above it. So the verse is talking about that in the future time, man will industrialize so much, will excessively produce, uh, will burn an immense quantity of fossil fuel so that he will pollute all his environment, land, sea, and air. And uh, we know that if anything happens naturally, it rectifies itself naturally. For example, if due to the intensive volcanic activity, the percentage of carbon dioxide increases in the atmosphere, we will find immediately that the precipitation of calcium carbonate at the bottoms of seas and oceans takes place to consume the excess amount of carbon dioxide produced through volcanic vents and fissures. But if the percentage of carbon dioxide uh, was increased due to industrialization, Allah leaves that to man so that he can taste some of his mischief. And the verse actually is warning man against the environmental crisis we are currently living in today. ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس ليذيقهم بعض الذي عملوا لعلهم يرجعون. Corruption has appeared on land and in the sea. ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس by what the hands of human beings have earned ليذيقهم بعض الذي عملوا Allah will leave that to them so that they can taste part of their own deeds or misdeeds ليذيقهم بعض الذي عملوا لعلهم يرجعون lest they should return back to their common sense to their logic to the straight path Allah has laid down for them we also know from the Quran and the Sunnah that Allah has created man as a vicegerent on earth, entrusted with that planet, asked 
to preserve its environment as much as he can in the proper way Allah has created it. Because Allah has created everything according to plan. Allah has made everything in its perfect form and shape in this universe. And man as a vicegerent on earth entrusted by it is responsible for maintaining the balance Allah has created in the environment. Of course, we read many verses in the Quran that uh, enhances this responsibility. We read in Surah Al-Baqarah, الذين ينقضون عهد الله من بعد ميثاقه ويقطعون ما أمر الله به أن يوصل ويفسدون في الأرض أولئك هم الخاسرون. Allah is speaking about the Jews who try to walk on earth, trying to corrupt everything and disturb the balance Allah has placed in that universe. The verse reads, who break the covenant of Allah after contracting it and savor that which Allah has ordered to be joined and cause corruption on earth, it is those who are the losers. Those are the true losers. The Quran describes man as vicegerent on earth. The Quran reads, وَإِذْ قَدَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةِ When Allah told the angels, I am going to create a vicegerent on earth. قَالُوا أَتَجْعَلُ فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَأَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءِ The angels answered immediately, Lord, are you going to create on land someone who is going to corrupt everything and shed blood all over the place? تجعل فيها ما يفسد فيها ويسفك الدماء ونحن نسبح بحمدك ونقدس لك and we worship you O oh Lord as faithfully and as sincerely as we can we glorify your name قال إني أعلم ما لا تعلمون Allah answered I know what you do not know so the warning was there from the very beginning that man is a free will being and that free will if it is used within the plan Allah has laid down for man, it can be used very successfully and can create lots of successes on the surface of that planet. Lots of happinesses, lots of justices on the surface of that planet. But if that free will is misused without any divine guidance, it can destroy everything on the surface of that planet. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entrusted man with the earth and he will hold man responsible about all his actions and deeds throughout his stay on the surface of that planet. The Quran reads, وَإِذَا تَوَلَّ سَعَى فِي الْأَرْضِ لِيُفْسِدَ فِيهَا وَيُهْلِكَ الْحَرْثَ وَالنَّسْلِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْفَسَادِ The Quran is speaking about a free willed being that can misuse that free will outside the divine guidance and then he can destroy everything. The verse reads, and when he goes away, he strives throughout the land to cause corruption therein and destroy crops and animals. And Allah does not like corruption. And look at the precision of the Quran. Really, what man is doing today is destroying all the plants on the surface of the planet, all the animals, and destroying himself. So by burning fossil fuel, in excessive quantities, more than 10 billion barrels of oil annually, more than 8 billion tons of coal annually, more than several trillions of cubic feet of natural gas annually. And uh, he assumes that the product of this burning will escape to outer space. But experience has told us that the product of this burning is actually a collection of heavy gases that remain attached by the gravity of the earth to the lower atmosphere. It can cause thermal occlusion. It can cause pollution of the atmosphere, of the hydrosphere, and of the lithosphere. It can seriously affect the life of plants, animals, and humans. It can make life virtually impossible. It can cause many diseases, some of which can be incurable 
And that's why the Quran, more than 14 centuries ago, has seriously warned against any action of corruption on the surface of that planet. The Quran reads, وَهُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَكُمْ خَلَائِفَ الْأَرْضِ وَرَفَعَ بَعْضَكُمْ فَوْقَ بَعْضٍ دَرَجَاتٍ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ فِي مَا آتَاكُمْ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ سَرِيعُ الْعِقَابِ وَإِنَّهُ لَغَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ And it is He, meaning Allah, all glory be to Him, who has made you successors upon earth, vicegerents on earth, and has raised some of you above others in degrees or ranks that He may try you through what He has given you. Indeed, your Lord is swift in penalty or in reckoning, but indeed He is forgiving and most merciful. So Allah is giving this warning that you man has been entrusted by that planet. Allah has created that planet in the best of shape, in the best of form, in the best of balance between everything on the surface of that planet. And you have been entrusted with that planet. So try your best to keep it as safe as Allah has given it to you. Try to keep its environment as pure as Allah has given it to you. Try not to corrupt the environment by your misdeeds and misbehaviors, by your greed and lust for wealth, and lust for money, and lust for material gain. Actually, one of the sad aspects of our lifetime is the material attitude taken by man in the current civilization. We will have a short break and then come back to you in a few seconds. So wait for us. Welcome back, dear viewers. We were discussing the great warning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all glory be to him, to man from misusing his free will in spoiling the system that Allah has created with great balance, with great justice on the surface of that planet. And the Quran repeatedly reminds man that he is a vicegerent on earth, that he is entrusted with that planet. He has to preserve the perfection Allah has created on the surface of that planet as much as he can. Because the slightest corruption of the environment on the surface of our planet can create lots of ailments to man, his animals, and his plants, can destroy life on the surface of that planet. The Quran reads, وَلَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ بَعْدَ إِصْلَاحِهَا And do not corrupt in the earth, do not carry any corruption on the surface of that planet after Allah has perfected everything in it. Man should not spoil the environment he is living in because Allah has created the atmosphere with certain specific chemical composition that is suitable 100% for the type of life we know of on earth. Allah has created the hydrosphere with chemical and physical properties that are highly suited for life on the surface of that planet. Allah has created the lithosphere, the outer rocky cover of the earth and the soil section on its surface with great precision that would make life on the surface of that planet as easy as possible and as feasible as possible. If man interferes through his greed, through his lust for material gains, through his love for power, man can spoil this very well-balanced system Allah has created for him. And that's why Allah has warned more than 14 centuries ago, ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس corruption on land and sea, including the atmosphere of both areas. Corruption has appeared on land and sea by what the hands of human beings have committed. And Allah will leave that corruption to the behavior of human beings, will leave it to the human beings, lest they would come back to Allah, come back to their common senses, come back to the right way Allah has planned for them. And here in this verse, another warning. وَلَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ بَعْدَ إِصْلَاحِهَا Do not corrupt the land after Allah has created everything in balance. The Quran also reads, وَكُلُّ شَيْءٍ 
عنده بمقدار الله has created everything according to a certain balance according to certain calculations according to certain measures so if man interferes to disturb that balance which Allah has placed in everything on earth uh, this is going of course to disturb the whole life of man can disturb all the environments on the surface of that planet and can cause lots of inconveniences to man and to his surroundings we also read in the Quran the Quran reads وَالْأَرْضَ بَدَدْنَاهَا وَالْخَيْنَا فِيهَا رَوَاسِيَا وَأَنْبَتْنَا فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ مَوْزُونَ and the earth we have expanded and uh, I say through volcanic activity and we have thrown therein stabilizers mountains lest it should shake with you with the man وَأَنْبَتْنَا فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ مَوْزُونَ and you have grown on it everything that is very well balanced very carefully ordered very carefully arranged so any inter intervention by man in a way that violates the divine guidance can easily disturb that balance and can create lots of problems to life on earth we now know that the chemical composition of the atmosphere is so well planned that uh, any slight disturbance can create lots of problems to man and to his environment if the percentage of oxygen for example in the atmosphere would be slightly higher than around 21 percent of today a stick of match can create fire on the surface of our globe if it was slightly lesser no man can exist no human being can exist probably only lower animals and lower plants can live if the percentage of carbon dioxide was slightly lesser than 0.03 percent Allah has placed in the atmosphere then and the process of photosynthesis by green plants could have been stopped and man would have never found enough food to feed on on the surface of that planet if it was multiplied several times as happened today by mass production of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide gases and then acid rain would come down to destroy the crops to destroy the animals to destroy the humans to destroy the buildings to destroy everything uh, if uh, nitrogen would be in excess to the current percentage of today, then uh, acid rain again can destroy everything. So everything in that uh, world has been planned according to a very careful divine plan. And man is here a visitor on earth for a very temporary period of time. He is a vicegerent on earth. He has been entrusted by that planet to use it and not misuse it. But sadly enough, during the current material civilization, industrialization has spoiled everything, has corrupted the atmosphere, corrupted the hydrosphere, corrupted the lithosphere, has infilled our world with dangers to man, animal, and plants. And uh, we do not know how far we are going along these lines unless we can rationalize industrialization unless we can use alternative sources for energy unless we can minimize the production of chlorofluorocarbon gases to the outer atmosphere only Allah knows what a bleak future waits for this planet and for its inhabitants so all these Quranic verses and I only quoted a few are warning us against any uh, over uh, doing things on the surface of that planet we are here for a very short span of time on the base which will be questioned on the day of judgment we have to use that span of time as rationally as we can as intelligently as we can as carefully as we can and we have to realize that this universe is going to be destroyed completely in one day so we should not really do things excessively we should not go into high rising buildings we should not go into elaborate luxuries in constructions we should not go into unneeded projects at all we have to use the amenities of this world 
as Allah has created for us as rationally and intelligently and economically as we can. And we have to count our steps on the surface of that planet carefully and realize that we are going to be questioned on every action we did, every plan we designed, every word we uttered, and every penny we earned and spent. We will be held responsible on the day of judgment about our living on the surface of that planet, how we used it or misused it, and on the basis of that, there will be eternity in life to come, either in paradise forever or in hell forever. Nowadays, we see that the product of uh, bombardment of Hiroshima and Nagasaki with two small atomic bombs by the Americans in 1945 are still causing people to suffer up until today. Between 1945 and 2009, a long lapse of time, and still the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, and the lithosphere is highly polluted. The children are born with many defects. Milk is coming out from cows and, and goats polluted with radiation. The water in rivers and lakes and underground is polluted. So one has to be absolutely careful about his actions and deeds on the surface of that planet and not to cause any harm to any living being, not to disturb the exact plan Allah has laid down for our existence on the surface of our planet. Lest he would be uh, responsible on the day of judgment, he will be questioned on the day of judgment, and he will be awarded or punished accordingly. And uh, in eternity, in life to come, there will be no return to this life. There will be no way to be excused from the ill deeds one has committed during his life on the surface of that planet. Allah does not accept corrupting what he has created. Allah does not accept corrupting the environment of that planet which he has created to be as suitable for the human life as possible, to be as suitable for life on the surface of that planet as possible. Trying to corrupt that is a refusal of Allah's gifts, is an objection to the divine plan, is a rejection of the divine guidance. So uh, I hope that uh, the lesson is clear. We, as Muslims, we have to preserve the environment as much as we can and to invite others for the preservation of the environment on Earth. And uh, I'll stop here thanking you for your patience and greeting you in our Islamic way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.